Hi guys, I am Kimberly and you are joining us for the Rope of Hope podcast. We are on the second day of launch episode. Um, so this is episode number eight, actually, within two days. So this has been such a huge thing. And I am so grateful to everybody who has either joined a live or watched a replay or listen to the audio. The audio is up. Um, it's already available on Spotify. And there's another platform that it's already available on. Um, I can't remember offhand what it was. But everything's up on YouTube. And it's now on Instagram, IGTV. So there are so many different places you can access all of this. Um, but I want to thank you all for your support. I right now have Jennifer Whitmore with me. Thank you so much for being on my show. How are you doing today? I'm good, Kimberly. Thanks for having me on today. I'm so excited to be with you. Of course, of course. Why don't you tell everybody just a little bit about yourself? Yeah, so my name is Jen Whitmore. Um, I am in the fitness world. I have been um, personal training for many years and uh, that's what I do currently. Okay, fun. Well, I know um, our topic today uh, for your episode is a miscarriage trauma. So I'm going to let you take the reins and share your story with that. Yeah. Um, okay. So uh, we kind of connected through Facebook on this and um, I feel that it's something that I now can talk about. Um, it's not necessarily such a um, traumatizing subject for me to bring up anymore. And I'm glad that I was able to walk through that and come to the other side because I'm hoping that if there's anyone else out there who has gone through things like this, then I want them to know that it will get better. You know, your grief will pass, things will change and you can overcome this. And, and it looks different like that for everyone. Um, so just a little bit about what I went through. I already have two children and my husband and I tried to get pregnant a third time. And we just never thought that it would happen to us. Um, you know, you don't you don't think like that until it does. And the statistics for miscarriages are one in four. And again, those numbers are really small, um, but you just don't think that it's going to happen to you. And so when we miscarried the first time, I was like right on that line of um, second trimester. And when we mm -hmm. went in, um, we were floored, you know, we were just like, we couldn't believe it. We were so um, surprised and devastated. And we were getting so close to the point of, you know, telling everyone and finding out what the sex of the baby was. And it just didn't go that way. And so after we um, kind of went through that, we didn't do any genetic testing or anything because we just thought, you know, it was just a fluke. Like it kind of happens and we um, were unfortunate, but we're going to try again. And so, of course, they recommended that we wait like one or two months um, until we try again. And I was just not having that. I was, you know, on it like white on rice. We're going to do this again. Let's get pregnant as soon as possible. And so we did. Um, and then the second time came around and we lost the baby again in right about the 16 week mark. So again, right over that line of that second trimester. And I actually made my husband go with me this time um, to the doctor appointment. And we unfortunately got the same results. And at that point, I think that's when the inside of me kind of cracked and shattered all over the floor because. I didn't realize until up to that point that I was trying to fill a hole, um, a void that the first miscarriage had left. And I was just trying to replace it as fast as I could so that I didn't have to sit with that pain. And so after it happened to me a second time, I just lost it. Um, I 
was very anxiety ridden. I was very depressed. Um, I started to manifest physical symptoms. Um, and this went on for months and months. Um, but I didn't want to take any medication to help. So um, I just suffered. I just suffered. And at some level, I felt like it's not necessarily my fault or that I deserved it, but it was just, this is life and this is what happens. And, you know, I'm no better than anybody else. So why not? You know, why wouldn't this happen to me? Which is a form of negativity in itself. But I started to manifest those symptoms. Um, my arms would go numb. My hands would go numb. My legs would tingle. Um, all kinds of just negativity. Like my legs would ache. My muscles would ache. And it was because I was so sad and so depressed that I just couldn't function. Um, I not only had the miscarriages, but during the time that I was pregnant, um, I was sick the entire time. The first um, pregnancy, I was sick all the way up to the point that I miscarried. The second time, I was sick all the way up to the point that I miscarried. And then we tried, um, once we, tried to kind of get over it. We actually ended up getting pregnant a third time by accident. We weren't trying to plan on having another kid. We were still trying to get over our two losses and I got pregnant again by accident. And we were just so hopeful. You know, we were just like, okay, like third time's a charm, you know, which sounds ridiculous when you think of things like a, a childbirth, but we were just so hopeful and still third time went to the doctor and we lost that baby as well. Same time frame. I was also sick again the third time. And so I just was a shell of a person. I just wasn't living. Um, and there was one point where I knew that I really needed to work on getting better, but I just didn't know how, because I was just so upset. And my husband looked at me one day and he just said, I just can't do this anymore. And it wasn't like that he, you know, wanted to leave or anything like that. It was just that he, he said that he missed me. Like I just wasn't regular anymore. Like I wasn't myself. Um, I wasn't doing all of the normal things that I used to do. I wasn't the person that I used to be. And I felt like that kind of gave me a shake and to, I guess put it in in layman's terms is that I knew that I had to do something immediately. Like I really needed to wake myself up and get over this. And so I ended up going to the doctor. Um, I did um, talk to them about what was going on. They ended up putting me on some anxiety medication. I started working out a lot, um, which is what I do anyway. I've been doing that for a long time. But um, when you're so deep in such a dark hole, you just can't see the light, you know, you just can't right. um, see two feet in front of you because everything is so dark. And so I really struggled every day, but every single day, like I turned off secular radio, I started listening to um, positive podcasts, to sermons from church. Um, I only listened to Christian radio. I would meditate on a regular basis. I worked out all the time. Like I changed my diet. There were just so many things that I implemented. And with the medication as well, I started to slowly get better. And it would still take me like some days would be good and some days would be bad. And then two days would be good. And then four days would be bad. And it still took me a really, really long time to get on top of that but it was so worth it. It was so worth it after realizing that I needed to pull myself back together and that I already had two kids that I needed to be thankful for what I already had and not continue to live in the sadness of what I lost. So oh I hope that that, I hope that that helps somebody somewhere understand that there are things that will happen to you but there's still a light at the end of the tunnel. And I'm here to tell you that it can be done. And there are people out there that will help you. And that actually kind of leads into a question that I had. So thank you for that little segue. That just made things easy for me. Of course. Um, I, <laughs> I know that I, as somebody who unfortunately has gone through a miscarriage, 
Um, because I lived in a city, there were a whole lot of resources ish. I, did you have resources aside from you know your your immediate family? Did you have resources there to kind of help guide you through all of that, or were you just kind of left to your own devices? Um, I'm sure that there probably were. And I will tell you that the doctor may have even offered it to me. Um, I, I don't want to throw anyone under the bus, but I just don't remember because I was so upset for so long that I just don't remember a lot of that. Um, it's like blocked, you know, from my memory. So I'm sure that there probably were resources. Um, but when I finally went back and told them, like, this is how I'm struggling, they were like, oh my gosh, like they couldn't believe it. You know, it's like they didn't know because I had shut myself down so much. So I do think that there were probably things out there more than I had actually known about. Um, but I also felt, I'm, I'm a very introverted person anyway. Um, there were a few people that I was able to talk to just because it had happened to them um, as well, family members and such. But it's almost like you're embarrassed. Um, when you're when you're having such a hard time doing things like getting out of bed and even caring about what's going on that day or much less that week or that month, it's like you're so embarrassed that you're so upset. And and there are other people that I have met who have also had miscarriages who just didn't take it as hard as I did. And that doesn't mean anything negative towards them. It's just that they're like, oh, you know, we're really sad and that's unfortunate. But for me, I was like, that was my child. I had their life planned, you know, I'm like, because we didn't know whether it was, of course, going to be a boy or a girl. But I'm like, my children were going to have a little sister, my children were going to have a little brother, and they were going to be, you know, um, roommates, and they were going to play with someone, you know, at, at um, outside when they grew up and all of these things that you as a parent have planned for that life that is no longer going to happen. And so I just took it so poorly. Um, that yeah, I just I just couldn't get out from under it. So I know not everyone is like that. But I do think long answer to your question. I do think that there were probably more resources out there than I knew about. Well, and I'm just speaking from my own experience. I, when I dealt with miscarriage, it was very early mm -hmm. in pregnancy, you were much further along. I mean, you were, you know, 16 weeks, you were second trimester, basically. Mm -hmm. And so that gives more of that bonding time with that baby. So that it makes sense that it was harder for you to, what's the word I'm even thinking of? Let um, go. Yeah. Yeah. I, it makes sense that you were making those fans because you were, you know, like you said, about to find out the sex and all of that. So you're, you're starting to plan and get excited. I know personally, I hadn't even gotten to that phase mm -hmm. and it still hurt me. So I can only imagine. And I'm, you're so strong. Thank you. And oh my gosh, hearing your story, you are so incredibly strong. And I'm, I'm so sorry that you went through that. I'm incredibly, you know, you don't know me from Adam really, but I'm really proud of you for, you know, being able to come through on your own time because you did have to grieve that and that is basically a grieving process isn't it yeah yeah it was um I definitely think it took me a, it took me a very very long time um to I would what I would call you know getting back to normal but there were so many things that came out of it um for example um I really jumped with both feet into my fitness business and my husband and I, we ended up um, sort of grieving separately with that. And after it was all over, it was something that we ended up talking about and coming together on um, because we did grieve separately. And that was really, really hard on our relationship as well um, because we didn't communicate through that. But then 
after things started to calm down, we were able to have a conversation about that and realize like what we had done. And it did bring us closer together. Um, I remember we went out to dinner one night and he was sitting across the table from me holding my hand and he just looked at me and he said, I have missed you. And it was all I could do, like not to cry at the restaurant because I felt like I had been missing. Like I felt like I had been missing from my life. And I was just at that point, just then getting back. And um, it was like coming home from a really long trip and it wasn't a fun trip either. (laughs) So um, it was, it was really good, but there were so many things that came from it. You know, I, Um, felt very thankful for the children that I already had. Because one of the things that I also learned is that we can't compare our own story to other people's story to other people's pain. You know, I know that there are other people who struggle having any children. You know, I know that there are people who have had longer term pregnancies than we did, and their child didn't make it. And so they've had to struggle with that. And everybody's pain is different. And so I don't pretend to know what other people's pain is or compare mine to theirs. Um, But I was very thankful that I already had children. And even if I couldn't have any more or chose not to have any more, then I already had them in my life and I was going to be okay with that. And I think even now it's been so long. um, My husband and I, we still every once in a while will kind of be like, are you sure, you know, are you sure we're done? You know, that kind of conversation because we chose not to try again. Um, because at this point, like our children are older now, I have a 14 year old and a 10 year old and I'm working on my online business. And that takes a lot of my time and our Mm -hmm. children are in sports. Like there's just so many things going on. And we said, you know, would we want to start like all over again, basically from scratch? And we just decided that it wasn't going to be for us. And I know that's not for everybody. And I don't want to say, you know, my story doesn't have like a happy ending because I didn't actually get a child after all of that. But my story does have a happy ending. I'm like, we've chosen what has is working for our family and not getting a third child at this point is okay with us. So we've we've come through um, a struggle and it's made us stronger for it. Well, I think that happy ending looks very different for every person. Absolutely. Because one person's happy ending is not another. Mm-hmm. You know, and I think that happy ending per se needs, you know, should be more look at, you know, if you internally are happy, mm-hmm. which I mean, I could see happiness on your face. And, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm assuming, you know, right now that in your life where you are at, you are happy with that. Yes. So that, uh, that is your happy ending in my, yeah. in my personal opinion. Mm-hmm. You know, I agree and, with you. And, yeah. So, um, and I know you said you are a fitness coach now, correct? I am. Yes. So what I would love to offer you, um, cause I want you to be able to promote your business, go on to the rope of hope podcast page and please let everybody know about your business, about what you do and how they can work with you if they would like to do so. Because I would love to connect you with some of my followers if they're interested. Yeah, that's fantastic. Thank you for that. Will do. Um, And just to give everybody an idea, I am a personal trainer and I do a lot of that stuff online as well. So Awesome. I know I could probably use a personal trainer in some areas of my life. So I might actually hit you up to kind of seal you out a little bit. That sounds good. I'm take it easy on the knees, though. Old age hurts. <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys, thank you so much for being here on this episode. Jen, thank you for joining me. I will be back again at 5 p.m. Mountain Standard Time uh, with another episode today. So I will talk to you guys later. If you are inspired by any of these stories, if they touch your heart, if they encourage you, if they're bringing you hope, please consider sponsoring me. Keep me caffeinated at buymeacoffee.com forward slash this fat girl life. You guys have a great day and I'll see you later.